series record between the Longhorns and the Razorbacks. A year ago up in Fayetteville, Arkansas kicked them sideways. Texas came into the ball game, ranked number one in the nation, made all kinds of mistakes early in the game. The Razorbacks got off on a dead run, and they laid it over 42 to 11, and that's kind of stuck in Texas craw ever since then. So I would imagine uh, that's been used as an emotional tool by Fred Akers and his coaching staff in preparing Texas for their finale against Arkansas. As we said, it is a cool day. It's going to be not going to get out of the 50s at all. As a matter of fact, it feels like it's hanging around the low 50s right now. Arkansas has won, uh, uh, is going to be kicking off as Texas will do the returning with Kelvin Epps, number 40, and Herky Wall to beat people. Epps is a new name, I'm sure, to some of you. 5'10", 170-pound sophomore, but there's the dangerous man, number 11. Boy, I tell you, Herky Walls just scares you to death when the little guy gets his hands on it. There's the new man, Kelvin Elks. Epps from Dallas, a sophomore. And Arkansas will kick it off with Bobby Hall doing the kicking. He is a freshman out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. He's one of three place kickers on the team. Uh, but the Arkansas kicking game in 1982 has not been particularly good. Arn will kick the ball into the wind. Well, let's see if the wind holds it up there and gives Walls and or Epps a chance. It is Walls, and he's going to have a chance from the eight-yard line. And he gets to the boundary, and they'll shove him out of bounds up around the 22. So here's the unit that starts offensively. Robert Brewer at quarterback, the senior from Richardson. Darrell Clark playing his last regular season game at tailback. Mike Luck has moved over into the fullback spot because of injuries. Tough ball player, good one. Brett Duhon, the young sophomore who has such a brilliant future in front of him. And Herky Walls winding up his career at the University of Texas today in the regular season with only the Sun Bowl game that is played. So the horns come up. Moves man up into the slot back position. The ball is handed off to Mike Luck out of the fullback spot. And he sticks his head into the crowd, and there isn't anything there. Up front, Bobby Mitchell, the tight end, 225 pounder. Casey Smith, 250 at tackle. Kirk McJunkin at guard, weighs 250. The center, Mike Ruther, a good one, 270 pounds. Doug Dawson at right guard, 260. And Brian Millard at 275. It is second down and about seven for Texas. The ball is handed off again to uh, a slight delay as uh, Darrell Clark, the tailback, senior out of Houston, fetches over the right side for about four yards. Arkansas's defensive unit up front, Smith, Buckingham, Richardson, Perot, they're big and they're quick, and the linebackers relatively young, Lee, Zinneman, and Fields, and they're quite good. The defensive secondary, Jones, Walters, Burns, and Lasker. So the football sits at the 28th. It is third down. They need about four. And Brewer gives to the tailback. And Darrell Clark does not get the first down as the Arkansas defense pinches on him and down he goes. Billy Ray Smith, number 87, in on the action as usual. Number 43, he's receiving for Arkansas. Telchik, number 22, and deep punt. John Telchik now in punt formation on fourth down and two. Standing back at his 15, going to hit it around the 20. Beauty. Wind's going to help carry it. Gary Anderson retreats all the way to his 21. Sidestep the drive to sidestep the man downfield. And couldn't do it. Coming down, Ty Allard, a linebacker to make the tackle. 48-yard punt is Tom Jones. Brings the Razorbacks out with Gary Anderson in at tailback, and what a player he is. Darrell Bowles, also a senior at Arkansas. Derek Holloway, another senior who came from New Jersey to play with the Razorbacks. Kim Dameron, another senior. All of them quick and dangerous. Holloway goes to the top of the picture, and Dameron comes to the bottom. With Bowles and Anderson set up, Behind Jones, let's see what New Hope will start with. He goes to Anderson, not a bad two, but Anderson runs into a solid hit, short of the line of scrimmage. Trey Curry, the strong safety coming up. Texas will not yield on anything. They come up and job on you. Eddie White is the tight end, 218 pounder. Orson Weems, the tackle. 
255. Charles Ginn, 265. Dave Beckett, 255 pound center, and a good one. Steve Court, 270, huge and powerful. And Alfred Mohammed, the right tackle, at 275. A loss of two, second down and 12. They want a draw in there. And again, he is short of the 20. Darrell Bowles gets about a yard for the Razorback as the Texas defense asserting itself here in the first Arkansas possession. With Williams, the great Darnell Diallo up front, true 4-3 defense for Texas, Lang Edwards and James, the linebackers, and the secondary consists of Cade, Acorn, Curry, and Gray. The football is sitting just short of the 20. It is third down, 11, and now Arkansas. Triple wide to the right side. And the whistle stops them before they can get it off, and I believe they ran out the 25-second clock. Let's see. Yep, that's what they did. The, the Arkansas Razorbacks not getting off to a smooth, right, even start. Their first play results in a loss as Texas gets defensive penetration. They never did get it back to the original line of scrimmage, and on third down and 11, they get nailed with a delay call. Arkansas on the season, 29% on third Dead down. Dead ball, delay of the game, offense, third down. Wendell Shelton is your referee, Bill Voss the umpire, Bobby Ratliff the linesman, line judge Bobby Brooks, field judge George uh, Slatke, and the back judge is Dan Wilford. Third and 16. Tom Jones, drop roll. Under pressure, and down he goes. Number 93 came whistling in, or 83 and 93 both were there. Ed Williams and Tony DeGreat. And Jones is shaking a little bit. The first man looked to me like he got a hold of the face mask. Did. It was an inadvertent grab. I am quite sure that'll be the call, though Jones got up as if his neck had been twisted on it. And it is ruled an inadvertent grab as the ball comes up to the 19. Grasping the face mask by the defense. Repeat third down. Oh, instead of third and 16, they've got a third and 11. Sure. Having a little trouble here with Lee Grosskopf. Mike, is it working now? I think we're, are you hearing me? I hear you, yeah. I am not hearing you too well. We're, All right, third down. Brad Taylor is in at quarterback, replacing Jones, who was shaken up. Taylor with a powerful arm goes down the sidelines deep, and it is intercepted. Richard Peavy, a freshman defensive back from Houston, Texas. They figure he's going to be a great one, and he certainly makes a fine play on this opening opportunity against the Arkansas Razorbacks. We knew that they were going to be showcasing Brad Taylor's arm today, and he is a promising young uh, sophomore. He was newcomer of the year in the Southwest Conference last year. Here he is, number 16, play action pass. He drops back behind his right tackle, and he's looking for his wide receiver on the left who is running a straight fly pattern. Now watch number 42, Peavy, come into your picture. And as Keith Jackson told you, he is a young man with a great future. Bex is now a good field position, moving the ball from their own 38. And Darrell Clark at tailback is hit by Bert Zinneman, a junior out of Little Rock. And Zinneman, number 48, only a junior. Bert Zinneman, number 48, the strong side linebacker for the Hogs, a junior who has been the leading tackler on the team for the last two years. He fights for good position and then makes a good tackle. That is good fundamental defense right there. Gain of about a yard and a half, second down. For Texas, the ball sitting right at the 40. And the sun breaks out. The heavy gray clouds as Brewer goes back to throw and whistles right over the middle and the pass is complete. Pass is caught by Bobby Mitchell, the tight end. In the SMU game that we covered earlier against Texas, Mitchell never really got into the ball game. He never saw the ball that day, but here they give him an opportunity and Brewer drills him. Drop back action, Brewer looks to his left first and he's gonna find his tight end, Mitchell, who has played three different positions now since coming to Texas. He runs a hook route right into the open area and the ball is on target. And it's a first down for the Longhorns at the Arkansas 46. Texas loves this kind of football. 
They just keep hammering at your midsection, and once in a while, they'll put it in the air. They won't throw it unless you make them. And the gain is for about five down near the 40. Daryl Clark is that kind of runner. He, yep. he really doesn't have a lot of speed or open field ability, but he has 952 yards, mostly just scratching and clawing. Second down, about five. Mitchell coming over to the left side. Brewer turns, gives to Clark. Clark right up the He goes uh, to the 36. And he may be just short of his first down. The Arkansas defensive statistics are impressive off their play this season. Texas will have to jump on them pretty hard today to keep the Razorbacks from finishing the year as number one in scoring defense. And I guess in the ultimate cover, that's all that matters, isn't it? That's really, the, the keys to victory usually are points. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> University of Texas running about 41% on the season in third down conversions, as you see Fred Akers now in his sixth year at Texas. And they're third and short. Need about a half a yard. You got Urban Davis in the backfield now. Mike Luck, two fullbacks actually. The ball goes to Davis, and Davis breaks it outside on good field blocking on the right side and gets the first down for the Razorbacks as he carries inside the Arkansas 30. Danny Walters brought him down for the Hawks. Both of these teams have been good conversion teams in short yardage situations. That man was very versatile playing for Frank Broyles back in the late 50s. Just inside the 30. Lou Holtz. Bussin. This team hasn't been able to do much so far. They've First defensive possession it was unproductive for them. Texas stays inside with it. They have sent Clark back into the tailback position. Mike Luck staying in at fullback, and Luck just runs it right up the middle. Mike stands at 5'10 and weighs 200 pounds. Set him at number 48, and number 67, Rick. He is a junior. Mike is one of those players that has the ability to hold on to the football. Now that I've said that, he'll probably cough it up, but <laughs> doesn't it always happen? Yeah, many times I've seen Texas in. Uh, disadvantaged field position and almost always since luck has been here he's been the man they send in there to handle the ball all right let's watch second down at about seven ball goes to Clark. Clark over the right side running behind Dawson and Millard and he punches across the 25 where Richard Richardson a 260 pound senior from Little Rock Arkansas brings him down Richardson has been busy yeah, Ricky's had a good year yep. That's a tough bunch up there. There's Smith is 228. Buckingham weighs in at 250. Richardson 260. And Perot stands 6'8, 253 at defensive end. Now Texas double wide left on third down and four. Brewer back goes over the middle with it. He's got a man wide open to pull back Clark. Clark tumbles down at the five yard line. First down and goal to go for Texas. Robert Brewer play action pass. He's going to fake to his tailback, roll a little bit to his left, look downfield, then throw the ball back to his tailback. Clark number 33, who is open in the seam of that defense. Billy Ray Smith, number 87, is handled very well right there by Millard, number 76. So Texas with an opportunity goes to the tailback Clark and he goes down. Oh, it's Davis, Irvin Davis, who goes down very close to the goal line. Davis, a 5'11", 225 pounder. So they got some muscle in that backfield. The muscle along both of those offensive lines too today. It'll be second down and goal to go for the Longhorns at the Arkansas one. Sticks his head in there and doesn't get it. Looks like Buckingham, number 73, just sort of stood up and said, not in my neighborhood, Buster. The Earl of Buckingham. Yeah. Those are the ball just short. Third down and goal to go for Texas. Trying to get the early lead in the ball game. Mitchell skips over to the right side. They go to Davis. He goes over the top touchdown. Second effort gets it. Davis number 
32 is the fullback, and he's going to follow a lead block in the right side of that Texas line behind Dawson and Millard. And with a good second effort, he battles his way into the end zone. Allegra for the extra point. It's good. Six minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first quarter, and Texas is on the board to lead seven to nothing. You're looking down on the University of Texas Memorial Stadium from the Goodyear Blimp America out of Houston with Captain John Moran. Out of Spring, Texas, Charlie Mitchell, our cameraman, is up there with him, Lee Burton. And Texas finds for the touchdown on 11 plays. They pass over the middle twice, big plays, and they get the lead. Allegra with the wind at his back, kicks it off, and it goes to Derek Holloway. Holloway at the goal line, almost dropped it. There he gets it out to about the 20. Jitter Field, who was victimized in the SMU game, a ricochet touchdown off the shoulder pad of Jitter Field into the hands of Bobby Leach. Leach shot ran him to the goal line, and that was the big, big, big play as SMU went on to beat the Longhorns. Let's mark it on the 19 for Arkansas. Brad Taylor is the quarterback, and Taylor turns inside it goes. It goes to Darrell Bowles. And Darrell, a senior out of Brownsville, Tennessee, gets a couple of three yards, maybe out to the 22. Bowles, the leading rusher on the team, and mostly with plays just like that, running behind the right side of that Arkansas line. They're known as the Great Wall of China. Big enough. Taylor back. Second down and eight. Goes deep with it. Penalty flags are thrown. And uh, the ball comes down in the arms of a Texas man. Back at the 31, but there's a penalty flag thrown up at the 42 of Arkansas. In the AM game, Texas was flagged seven times for pass interference. We have the referee listening to the judgment of one of his colleagues. It's against the Longhorns. That's illegal use of the hands. Take a look at it now as Holloway comes down the field. We have had some controversial interference calls this last season. Freddie Acorn, number right, 17, is going to make illegal contact right there. Yeah, they pinched him. The first man that illegal touched him was... Illegal use of the hands by the defense. Automatic first down. The first man was all right because he's, he's allowed that one shot. But it's, it's turning out to be a pretty rough day on Arkansas quarterbacks, too, as Diallo goes after Brad Taylor. That's a late hit. Taylor, all right, turns, gives the ball to Gary Anderson. Good blocking on the right side, and Anderson with explosive speed breaks it out for another Arkansas first down as he gets to the 39. Jerry Gray brought him down. Anderson has been one of the great all-purpose players in hog history right here. He has been used effectively as a receiver, as a runner, and also as a return man. Great athletic ability. He is one that really breaks the game for them. And a good tackle in the open field. He made one of the great catches I've ever seen in the ball game against SMU. Went right, right up between two defenders. He yep. held on. From the 39, first down. Taylor gives the ball inside. And good tuck running by Bowles. Gets it up. Close to another Arkansas first down. Texas is leading 7 to nothing, with 4.55 to go in the first quarter. Bowles a good nuts and bolts runner. Best running tackle to tackle. Anderson is their outside threat. That tells you what I was just talking about in terms of all-purpose play. Second down and a short yard. The Bowles, Bowles across midfield on a first down for Arkansas at the Texas 49. It didn't look like the handling of the ball was all that precise, but it worked out. Hey, 
break. Coaches, pitching, coaches, back. First to down, play. Razorbacks, Longhorn 49. First time Arkansas has been on the Texas side of the field in the ball game. Guys sort of opening up now in the sun. Quite right. Taylor fakes it, keeps it, want to turn it. And he gets it down just short of the Texas 45 where Gary Gray hits him. Gray is a sophomore out of Lubbock for the Longhorn. They're anticipating the crowd to measure out in the neighborhood of 73,000 today. Not quite a sellout. Second down in about seven. On a deep drop, goes down to Anderson. Gary Anderson, foot race corner, touchdown, Arkansas. showcase Taylor and Anderson today play action pass Brad Taylor dropping back he has the strength to throw this ball about 80 yards in the air and he really has a good touch this time as he throws a corner route to number 43 Gary Anderson who adds to some of those all-purpose yes. yards that we just talked about the point is Texas had sent uh, Curry the strong safety on a blitz they got Anderson out there against the linebacker Mark Lang and no way can Lang play him one-on-one -on -one. Well, the Longhorns stick it in the end zone, and the Razorbacks answer right back to tie with three and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. And Arkansas opening up, going long, deep, and it worked. Had a dream situation to get a guy with the quickness and sheer burning speed of an Anderson on a linebacker. And they made it work. Now we're told that uh, Tom Jones, uh, when Tom had to leave the game, has suffered a scratched eye. It's not very serious, but he's just going to have to take a few minutes to let it clear up. And he'll be able to play, we think, before the day is done. Here's the kickoff by Horn, and it goes to Epps. And Epps takes it well upfield as the wind held it up and breaks it well as Epps comes back out to the Texas 33. About a 23-yard return for the youngster. Now watch number 53. He's the linebacker who had the misfortune of getting matched up against Gary Anderson. And what you can see here is that it's a mismatch as Anderson runs down. Mark Lang, number 53, the linebacker, left there all alone because of the safety blitz. Anderson blows right by him, cuts to the outside on the corner route, makes the over-the-shoulder catch on a perfect toss from Brad Taylor, who is now eighth in career passing despite the fact that he is only a sophomore. First down for the Horns from their 33, and let's see how soon they decide to go deep and look for Herky Walls on the play. Right now, they stay with the tailback, Darrell Clark, and Clark gets it to the 35, giving two yards on the carry at 3.15 to go first quarter. 80 yards, six plays, 45-yard pass run, the payoff. We expected them to showcase Anderson and Taylor today, and they said they would try to create mismatches for Anderson, maybe get him the ball as often as 75% of the time. King is in now at defensive tackle for Arkansas, and Brewer will get it. Smith was after him, but the pass was away and dropped. Mitchell. And they're looking to their tight end, and Bobby, the pass was low, and Bobby just couldn't quite come up with it. Well, how about that? You just make your plans now for New Year's night to be with us from New Orleans. As Georgia, number one undefeated, goes against number two Penn State. That'll be your national championship bowl game, 8 o'clock Eastern time, right here on ABC. Mm, is that going to be a dandy? Woo. Third down and eight. Urban has time. Whips it over the middle, Mitchell. And Mitchell toss it up. And Arkansas has got it. Buckingham. Earl Buckingham covers it for the Razorbacks. And they have it at the Longhorn 48. Mitchell, the tight end on the left, is running a hook route. Now watch it. The ball is right into his hands. 
Finneman gets the first contact right there. The ball caught up, and here comes Earl Buckingham, number 73, to cover the football. Danny Walters, number 22, the quarterback, the man that knocked it out of there. Austin is the capital of the state of Texas. And it's growing and growing and growing. Every time I come down here, it's big. Just short of the Texas 48. First down for Arkansas now with Jesse Clark in at fullback, the big guy. And Brad Taylor, the quarterback, going to put it up. He's got Anderson. Hit him right on the numbers on a first down at the Texas 35, right in front of Jerry Gray. Good pattern. I like that kind of route. Play action pass. He looks to his right, throws back to his left. Anderson, this time, instead of going to the corner, runs an out pattern, and he was there, and you saw the quick release of Brad Taylor. Lou Holtz has said, as we look at that Army-Navy score, my goodness. How about that one? Might be a coaching change at Army. We've got a Texas man hurt. Ralph Darnell, number 94, defensive tackle, being attended to on the field. We've got a timeout. We'll be right back. Darnell came off the field, hurt leg. John Haynes has gone in to replace him. About the same size, Haynes 6'6", 260. Arkansas football, first down. All just short up in the Texas 35. With two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. As big Jesse Clark, the fullback. Oh, he's loose. Puts his shoulder down and rams into Mossy Cade and tumbles down at the 20. First down, Razorback. There's a man who's playing with pain. They didn't know if Jesse Clark would play today. Here he is on a quick hitting draw play. And despite playing with a sore ankle today, he makes a good cut to the outside. Shows some of the quickness. He doesn't really have broken field ability, but what he does have is a lot of strength and a lot of quickness, and obviously a lot of moxie. And he gives him a first down of the Texas 20. Gary Anderson going outside. Fumbles the football, but it ricochets out of bounds. Deacon Diala brings him down. That was a fortunate fumble. Kiki Diala, number 31, the leading sacker in uh, Texas history, is tied for that record already. And you see some of his scrambling ability as he fights off a blocker, gets to the outside, and chases down Gary Anderson, number 43. He also got some help. He was down before they fumbled the ball, so it's marked down at the 17. Texas for a three-yard pickup. They go to Jesse Clark. And Clark, who weighs 226 pounds, and a senior from Crossett, is brought down by Tony DeGreat. They go sophomore from Snyder. Tony's a painter. 6'4", 270, you like everything you think. Darnell's frame knee now. He's going to the clubhouse. Well, they'll take a look at it. The football is sitting at the 14-yard line. It is third down and four for Arkansas. Taylor. Oh, the ball is swept down by Kiki Diala as he tried to lateral it out, and Diala recovers the Texas Septum. You know why now they think that Kiki Diala is one of the best defensive players they have ever had, and the statistics will bear that out. Watch the quickness right here and the strength of number 31, Kiki Diala. He sees the play. He reads it. He reads the option. Now watch his right hand reach out right there and deflect the pitch from Brad Taylor on the option play. Then comes in to cover the football. And Texas takes over first down at its own 22. What a play. They go to the tailback. Darrell Clark is out to the 26. He's stopped by number 48. 40 seconds to go in the first quarter in a 7-7 ball game. Well, it looks to me like Arkansas's Darber might have been down for a few days, but they're, they're playing tough now. Well, as we pointed out, they had that extra week to kind of regroup and put things back in perspective. Now they're playing their kind of football. It's the tailback Clark again, getting to the outside. Boy, he got a dandy block to get him around the corner. And he picks it all the way down to the Arkansas 37-yard line. And the man that got him going, number 66, Doug Dawson, the guard. Boy, he just, he took three Arkansas men down. Doug Dawson, the guard, watch him. He is pulling from right to left. 
There it is, right there. There's the hit. Clark follows into the outside. Now watch the way he judges it right here. Look at Herky Walls down Herky field. Walls blocking <laughs> downfield. Good play, and that should put him very close to that thousand yard mark for the season. Yeah, he's now got 63 yards on nine carries in the first quarter. And after the first period of play, it's Texas 7 and Arkansas 7. They've marked the football just inside the 37. After that big run by Clark, who now has 1,015 yards on the season, and we begin play here in the second quarter. 7-7, Robert Brewer back to throw, going deep. Fly pattern for Herky Walls, touchdown. Seven yard bullet to Herky Walls, and the extra point try by Allegra is good. And so Texas regains the lead at 14 to 7 on the first play of the second quarter. Walls, a sprinter on the Texas track team and a former state high school champion. 5'8, 154 pounds, and he is like a bullet when he gets going. Robert Brewer's straight drop back action. He throws the fly, the up, whatever you want to call it. Herky Walls on a foot race beats Danny Walters, number 22, makes the over the shoulder catch, flashes that speed into the end zone. Closer look at Brewer. Good footwork. He steps forward. He puts the ball on a nice looping trajectory. Here again, you see the over the shoulder look. He just barely beats Walters, number 22, 36 yard touchdown catch. Texas will kick off. Allegro will hit it into the wind for Holloway. Derek takes it at the two, dribbles it once, looks for a hole, and gets out to about the 16 17. Make it the 17. Here's Herky again, isolated. I would not like to be a cornerback and have to run with this guy. Great fly pattern. When you see him coming out of the slot and down the sideline like this, you know that they're going to try to get the football to it. And he beats finally number 22, Walters. Makes a good effort, but the ball is thrown perfectly and settles right in on his right shoulder. Nothing fancy about it. It's just nope. pure speed. The old-fashioned fly pattern. Kiki Diala coattailed him, and they get him at the six. Kiki Diala, number 31, I think will have a future in the NFL. He and Billy Ray Smith are two of the premier defensive players in America this year. He has already set a record for sacks. Coming into this game, he had tied the record. Now here he comes after Brad Taylor, number 16. Orson he Weaves fights off two or three blockers yeah. and then really reaches out and makes a great effort right there. He handled Orson Weems pretty well. Lost his back from about the 18 to the 6. And out of the end zone, Taylor. It's good. It is Jones back in at quarterback. It is Tom Jones who completes the pass to Derek Holloway. It was almost picked off by a Texas man. Holloway cradled it in and turned it into a big, big game. Derek Holloway, who is also a good tandem player, he has doubled both as a receiver and as a return man. He's running a, a curl in route right there. Good defense by Texas, but he grabs the football and then makes a good move upfield. Mosey Cade, number three, was the man who was on the coverage. Arkansas is up now on the 46. Texas got him backed up, but that one big play has got him upfield, and they give it to Gary Anderson. And Anderson takes it over to the Texas side, down to the horn, 46. Well, Keith, we felt that this was pretty much of a pick -em game, and as you look at those stats, it's pretty indicative of the, the type of game we expected. Uh, Arkansas slightly ahead in total yards, mostly because of Taylor and Anderson. Arkansas man shaken up. That's Luther Franklin, a freshman out of Houston. And he's going to have to leave the ball game. 
tight end has been something of a problem for Arkansas. It's been a position where nobody has really stepped in and, and taken over. They, of course, had some great ones in years past, the most recent being Darrell Mason, who played there so successfully. Second down and two from the 46. And they give the ball off to Jesse Clark, and Clark just runs straight ahead, runs right in behind Beckett and Ginn, and gets the Arkansas first down at the Texas 43. Uh, Steve Court, who normally wears number 66, is now wearing number 75 for Arkansas. But maybe they didn't bring any extra 66 jerseys. I think they'll still recognize him. Well, we don't have much trouble. Call it the 42, Texas. And Tom Jones, he was taken up earlier, got a slight scratch in the eye, but it's all right, obviously. And so the senior is back in there at quarterback. Dubs boy from Ruston, Louisiana. The linebacking core of both these teams return intact for next year. Uh, the top six people for uh, Texas, for example, are freshmen, sophomores. This is two sophomores. Uh, two juniors and two freshmen. So they all come back next year. And Arkansas is in about the same situation. Second down. About nine. And Jones goes to the sideline. Holloway's there at the 31 for the catch. And it should be a first down. Mossy Cade defending on the play. He had to give Holloway because of his speed some cushion. Play action fake. Drop back pass. Jones looking to his left. Holloway on a sideline cut. Mosey Cade giving that ground that Keith Jackson just mentioned. Coming up, making a good open field tackle. You really got a long way to throw the football. Yep. Threw that thing about 35, 38 yards in order to, to pick up the first down. From the 31 of Texas. Jones gives it to Gary Anderson. The ball comes loose. Texas got it. Anderson struggling in traffic, and somebody poked it loose. So, Arkansas turns it over, and Texas now will take over. Be made by December the 15th. Arkansas's third turnover in the ball game, and Texas possesses at their own 32. And the Longhorns leading the Razorbacks 14 to 7, with 11:40 to play in the first half. We've got Terry Orr in at fullback now. Mitchell goes in motion. They give it to Clark, and Clark is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Coming in, Keith Burns, strong safety, number 30, tripped him up. On ABC's Monday Night Football NFL. You got the New York Jets and the Detroit Lions, and the Jets and Lions both thinking about getting into the playoffs. Jets three and one, Lions and two two. The Jets coming off uh, a win over Green Bay, and they have found themselves a running back. Yeah, Freeman McNeil. Mm -hmm. You bet. Loss on the play of two yards. It's going to be another loss on the play. The Arkansas defensive bunch now starting to swarm, led by Billy Ray Smith. Billy Ray Smith, number 87. It's easy to see why he is one of the premier defensive players in America. He runs right through the blocker, steps in in front of the ball carrier, upsets the play, and down goes Clark, number 33. Back on the 26-yard line. So it's third down and 16 for Texas. Arkansas now drops the man back into center field. And you've got some contact at the top of the picture, and the contact comes from Casey Smith, the offensive tackle. So Arkansas has an option now to take the five yards. And they will. So it'll be third down and 21 from the 21. Dead ball. Illegal procedure, Illegal offense. offense, third down. Well, Darnell, we got bad news. Horn cartilage, that'll probably finish the season for him. Oh boy, too bad. We're back, he's on, Smith after him, throws it away. 
He loops it upfield trying to get it to Clark. He's also running for his life because Billy Ray Smith had his ears laid back and was coming. Billy Ray Smith coming from the blind side right now. I tell you, I played against his daddy, Billy Ray Sr. He was not nice to quarterbacks either. <laughs> sure wasn't. <laughs> well, a dandy. John Telchik, freshman. Standing back around his six. He ought to hit it around the ten. Gary Anderson, the deep man. End over end, forces a fair catch call as Anderson has to run up in a hurry. And one thing they do preach up at Arkansas, it's a legacy from Frank Broyles. Catch the ball. Don't let it bounce. Well, be careful. We've already had one cartilage storm today. Somebody tumbled off that stack. We might have another one. <laughs> ten minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half. And Texas sitting on a 14 to 7 lead. Arkansas now. Good chance. From their own 48. First down. Courts now back to his original jersey. Six to six. Tom Jones under pressure. Throws it in the general direction of number 21, Darrell Bowles. But he was really getting pressure from Ty Allert. See the, the Arkansas. First time they had it, it's intercepted. Second time they scored. Third and fourth time they laid it on the ground. Court wearing his number. I don't know what's going on with that 75 jersey in 66. Maybe they had to sew up a hole or something. I don't know, but they got one back now. And he's back to his original number. Second down and 10. Jones, what about draw? And Tom takes it down to the Texas 45. High Allert brings him down. Pretty good call on second and long yardage. Third down and three. Dameron to the top and Holloway to the bottom of the picture. That's the wide people. Bowles, he's close. Depends on the mark. Diala again. I tell you, the two defensive ends, Diala for Texas and Smith for Arkansas, both having great games. It's close enough for the change to be waved in at 9.16 to go first half. Southwest Texas, uh, Jim Wacker closing out his career down there today by advancing his team into the championship finals of Division II, beating Jacksonville State. Wacker's going over to Texas Christian. Whole staff moving him on Moss to Fort Worth and try to get things going. And uh, they actually are going to go in there with some pretty good football players. That's not a bad football team. That F.A. Drive is starting to put together over there. Uh, that might be a troublesome bunch as the years come on here in the Southwest Country. First down for Arkansas. They give that ball on a delay to the tailback Bowles. He goes to the 40 for a couple of yards. ABC's Wide World of Sports feature event will be Rafael Bazooka Limon against Bobby Chacon live out of Sacramento, California. And uh, it'll be a good one. This will be the fourth time these fighters will have met. Uh, previous three, each one of them won one, and then they drew. So that's the Super Featherweight Championship, WBC. On second down, Tom Jones in trouble. Pressure coming from Ty Allert, 48, and then Kiki Diala came in to blow him down, and a big loss all the way back to the Arkansas 49. Kiki Diala, number 31, puts the finishing touches on after Ty Ellert applies the pressure initially on quarterback Tom Jones. Here comes Diala from the blind side after Ellert, number 48, originally puts on the pressure. Well, that's a loss of about 10 yards. Going back. Pressure's on again. Texas will concede you nothing. They just come 
and come and come. Bill Heathcock, 68. Despite the fact that Arkansas has one of the best offensive lines in college football, Texas defensively is really pressuring the passer today. Number 68, Bill Heathercock, is the ringleader of this group as they put the pressure on Tom Jones. He's a big sophomore, 260-pounder from Garland, Texas. But there was a penalty flag against... Offside defense. Third down. Texas. The man who was offside was Kika Diallo. Kika just, he's so jacked up now. He's having a good day that he was flying. There are your officials for the ball game. That is the fourth penalty against Texas. A total of 20 yards on the four flags. The ball is now sitting at the Longhorn 46. Where it is third down. And about 14. And there's a penalty flag. And you got some movement along the offensive front of Arkansas. So the illegal procedure is the second Arkansas penalty, both of them five yarders. They're wearing a hole in the middle of the field out there, aren't they? Ball comes back just inside the 49. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, third down. Keith Kidd, number 83, is the wide man to the bottom of your picture now. Lou Holt on the sideline. Texas almost jumps. It's third down and about 11. Pressure's on. And Tom Jones, Ty Allard. Ty Allard is just wearing him out. Number 48, he just flattened him on the rug. And Arkansas left to kick it. Ty Allard coming from that outside linebacker applies the pressure and the quick screen never got off the ground. Brad Taylor will do the punting. First punt for Taylor today. 6.59 to go in the first half. And Red spins it upfield over the head. And Texas deep man Rob Morshell and the ball ricochets into the end zone. It was a 51-yard punt by the Arkansas quarterback. Right now, let's join Jim Lampley. Earlier today, before 67,307 in Philadelphia, Navy beat Army 24-7. Sophomore quarterback Rick Williamson filled in for the injured Marco Pagnanelli. Gary Tranquil got a win in his very first year at the Naval Academy, something that he needed to make it a successful season. Gerald Walker gained 66 yards in the game and became the number two all-time rusher at West Point behind only Glenn Davis. A win for Navy, back to Keith. We got Jimmy sitting in the open today. He's not tucked away in a warm confine of the New York studio. Clark, the tailback, carries it. Gets it out to the 21 for a yard on the play. They're set up over there in the uh, in what, when you have track and field each year, is the shot put area. And it's cold. We were sort of giggling at that whole crowd today. You know, there's the use. Jack Whitaker all wrapped up in his coat. Welcome to the world, guys. <laughs> Double handoff. Turkey Walls winds up with it. Gets loose and then steps out of bounds because there was nothing in front of him but great big folks wearing white shirts and Herky, who is only 154 pounds, stepped out of bounds. You get the feeling that maybe the, uh, the Hogs have scouted that play a little bit. He was averaging 18 yards per carry on reverses before today's game. Well, it was a little slow to get going, too. It didn't, uh, didn't really pop it out of there. Clark comes out now for Texas. Here are the numbers on Herky Wall. Our attendance now told 67,903. They were expecting 73. Brewers pass over the middle. Good. Yep, it's good up to the 29. Mike Chapman making the catch, playing tight in, and they mark it down at the 29, just a yard short of the first down. Mike Chapman is a big guy, 6'4", 240 pounds. He doesn't catch a lot of passes at the tight end position. He's thought of more as a blocker. But right here, he runs a little crossing route. The ball is thrown slightly behind him. He reaches back. This is, I say, he doesn't catch very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Graphic. 
John Telchik in now on fourth and one. They're not going to mess with it. They're going to get rid of it, leading 14 to seven. He's hit two putts today of 48 and 32 yards. That's not too good, but it's a tail dragger and it ought to roll quite a bit. And Arkansas has got to let that one go. And you see what happens when you when you don't feel the thing. It just keeps on wobbling downfield and rolls all the way down to the eight yard line. So it winds up. Ball carries about 30 yards and then rolls another 33. Five minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the first half. Texas 14, Arkansas 7. I'll explain that tail dragon phrase right after this play. I got a letter from a lady a couple of weeks ago who asked to be informed as to what in the world it meant. Brad Taylor is the quarterback, gives to Jesse Clark, and Clark pops it up for a couple of yards. Not a whole lot there as the uh, defensive uh, unit closed on him. By tail dragger, I mean, is the back part of the ball, or the back point of the ball, if it hits the ground first, it's going to roll downfield and roll and roll and roll. If the nose goes down first, oftentimes it'll kick back up the you and stick for you. That's, I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> now I know what a tail dragger is. <laughs> Second down. And eight from the ten. Taylor out of his end zone. Gets it off, and he's got a man, but he is short of the first down. As Jesse Clark coming out of the backfield and makes the reception up around the 14. What they're doing on that play is the quarterback's dropping and then rolling, and as a result of that movement, the center, Jay Beckett, is coming back off the snap of the ball, and he literally is, is functioning as the pull man or the pull blocker because Texas will scrape off that linebacker and send him once they see that quarterback roll. But with a center coming out of there uh, to pick him up, it gives the quarterback time, and you've got to be a pretty good athlete to do that. That's kind of the big man on big man theory on the 4 3 defense. Yep. Taylor gets a little daylight, and then the door closes. And the man that slammed it on him was number 99, Tony DeGreat. And Arkansas's Taylor now will have to punt it. And Texas should get pretty good field position. That is the third sack of an Arkansas quarterback by Texas. DeGreat Tony. Boy, he's a big one, isn't he? Yeah, he's liable to be a pretty good player by the time he's through. Brad Taylor now, his only punt was a 51-yarder. They need a big one right here. That's a pretty good one. Way back to Marshall at the Texas 44, and he's got some room. And Marshall takes it inside the 30, and a clip is going to be called against Texas at the 29. That was a 54-yard punt. Marshall, number eight, who's listed as a backup quarterback, and you see the clip right over there. It was number 88 for Arkansas, and that would be Hayes. No, that would be Missler, the, the flanker. <clears throat> I swallowed wrong. You all right, Coach? I'm all right. We're back at the 44 after the clip. Clipping on the offense, on the run back, first down. That is the fifth Texas penalty, now totaling 35 yards. And coming into the ball game, the Horns had uh, they picked up a lot of flags. Any contact from behind constitutes clipping. Remember, it used to be that if you had the head in front, it was not a clip. They had been penalized 70 times for 660 yards coming into the game. There's your delay. It goes to Clark, the tailback. And Clark is down to a close to the 40. Give him three yards on the carry. There's the time remaining in the first half of play with Texas leading 14 to seven. Clark has really come on the last part of this season and I think some of the NFL scouts are gonna have to rethink him despite the fact that he lacks speed and open field ability. He's just been such a dependable runner for them that I think they're gonna take another look. Cut down there behind the line of scrimmage. Guess who? Billy Ray Smith. Billy Ray Smith, number 87, has literally done it all for the Hogs. He has been a sack man. He has stopped runners just like this. Uh, he has been a great pursuit man. He is the leader of a defensive unit known as the Swarm. Well, and Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator last year, for example, uh, cover, he, he had uh, Smith in five different positions. Good point. NFL scouts project, uh, project him as either an inside or outside linebacker. 
Brewer puts it up. Incomplete intended for Herky Walls. Not a catchable ball. There was contact. The ball was well over his head, I think. Herky stands only 5'8", remember, but he went way up. Herky is in the slot this time, and he's running a very simple route down and up the seam. And then he cuts across, and right there, I, I would say that he jumps a little bit too soon as uh, he gets the coverage there from the safety man. And had he taken about two or three more steps, then made the jump, he may have touched the ball. I'm not sure if it was a catchable pass, but he did jump too soon. 2.01 to go in the first half now, and Telchik is in on fourth down to punt. And Texas is going to absorb a five yard penalty for a delay of the game. That's only going to help uh, Celtic because could back him up a little bit, give him a little bit of room to try to angle the ball and, and uh, Texas try to kill it deep. Celtic has kicked 48, 32, and 63. It's not linked. That means much on this punt. It's where he puts it. He's got a chance. Anderson comes up, touches it, fumbles it. Texas has got it. Ronnie Mullen recovers the ball. That's four turnovers by Arkansas. Anderson takes a big risk right here in trying to catch this football and run with it, and he pays for it. Ronnie Mullins, a wide receiver, number 88, is the man who is in perfect position to cover the football. You see him right there, number 88, Mullins. Looked to me like Gary might have been a little indecisive about the play, and you just cannot be indecisive because the ball was spinning, and he got up into the wind. There's a little breeze blowing right into the face of the kicker when they're going left to right. The ball just kind of hung there and just kept backing up, backing up, backing up. Right. Either fair catch it or make a choice to run. Right. So here's Texas with a big chance. Minute and 53 seconds to go down on the Arkansas 19. First down, and they'll go to the ground. The infantry to the 15. Just inside, close to the 14, is Clark Carr. Terry Orr carries. Terry Orr is another big back. He's 6'3", 220. They do not have a breakaway runner. They don't have anyone like a Gary Anderson, for example, but they do have some good nuts and bolts runners who will run for you tackle to tackle and get the tough yards. Brent Duhon, wide to the right, bottom of the picture. Throws it to him. Oh, my goodness, it's right in his hands. He had a touchdown, and he let it go right off of his arm. Nathan Jones had a chance to pick it up. This is a very catchable pass. Duhon number seven is running a quick post route down and in. Right there. Now, right there. He hit him. Well, as we used to say, in a bad place. <laughs> right in the hand. You see that Nathan Jones, 37 and wide, he had a chance to pick it off. So did Greg Lasker, for that matter. You absolutely positively have to catch that ball. Yep. Third down. Six from the 14. And it goes to Mitchell, the tight end. To the one, first and goal. And a minute 11 to play in the first half. Nathan Jones brought him down. I've always liked this route. Here is Mitchell. It's a trip formation to the right. The two outside receivers are clearing, and here comes Mitchell from the inside to the outside. Breaks one tackle. And the cornerback, Nathan Jones, number 37, finally brings him down. First Good play. goal from the one as Brewer sets him and hands it off. And Urban Davis, who has scored one of the two Texas touchdowns, is held just short of the goal line. And Brewer, in this game now, 6 of 10 for 105 yards and a touchdown, has taken possession of the Texan Texas season record. A touchdown, attempts, completion, and yards. He is in the book. Texas takes a timeout now, killing the clock with 46 seconds to play in the first half. Trying to get another touchdown. 46 seconds to play in the first half. Texas in possession of the ball. Second down, goal to go, just short of the goal line. 
Brings that ball off to Davis. And he didn't make it. Milton Fields, number 49, linebacker, stood him up short of the goal line. Lock running. Texas with two timeouts remaining will spin one right here to stop the clock at 32 seconds. So the Razorbacks trying to bow their neck. Texas trying to score it. We've got a timeout. While they're talking on the Texas side, let's look at Arkansas' campus. No man in 20th century America has done more to advance the study of international relations or promote human understanding than J. William Fulbright. A former president of the University of Arkansas and United States Senator for three decades, he elevated international education through the Fulbright Scholar Program. Now Arkansas and the University have established the J. William Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences and an Institute of International Relations. Fulbright College, dedicated to academic excellence. That's what we have at halftime. We add one thing to it that Frank Royals will join Lee Grosskopf and I for a couple of minutes of discussion on some rules that have been troublesome during the past season. So much judgment imposed on officiating these days. All right, third down and goal to go. About two feet away. Let's see what Fred Eckert wants to call here. Brewer keeps it. Down. Texas fan, uh, which normally whoops it up after a horn touchdown, they're filing down out of the stands job, right now to get ready for halftime, and they can't blow their horns. But <laughs> 29 seconds to play now as Texas moves its lead out to 13 points, and Raul Allegra comes in to try the extra point. Rob Morshell does the holding for him. Barry Switzer calls him allergy after what, <laughs> what, <laughs> is that right? after what he did to the Sooners last year. Uh, <laughs> 37 out of 38 on extra points this year. He nails it. And Texas leads by 14. All right, let's keep that straight up the second half. Good job, everybody. New Year's night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, 7 Central and 5 Pacific. Game of the year, the Georgia Bulldogs and the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Penn State, number one under Joe Paterno, a national championship. They beat Georgia in New Orleans New Year's night. Got a pretty good chance to claim one. OSMU figures they've got a shot at it themselves. But join us New Year's night here on ABC for Georgia Penn State. Number one, number two. Lions could be the better. Lions dogs. You guys are going to have some fun down there. Ooh. Oh boy. How about them dogs? <laughs> Remember that? <Yeah. laughs> Two fine teams. Two fine universe. 21 to 7. As Texas kicks off and the Legras kick jumps out of bounds up around the 7. So they'll bring it back and do it again. Eric Holloway watched it tumble out of bounds. Lou is not pleased, I am sure, with what's happened here. Four turnovers by Arkansas. One day you're drinking the wine, the next day you're stomping the grapes. That's, that's the Lou Holtz line, right? Yeah. <laughs> one of his many one-liners. He's the king of the one-liners. I've never heard anybody better at him. Twenty-nine seconds to go in the first half. from the 35. I'd like to see all kickoffs in college go back to the 35 myself. So many of, oh, he bounces this one on the ground. That's going to be picked up. Picked up by Kevin Wyatt. And Wyatt gets it back to about the 31. And the clock now shows 23 seconds. As soon as the chains are in place, the referee okay, Wendell Skelton will start the clock. Dameron, Holloway, white people. 
Taylor, quarterback. Back he goes. Gets away, gets his pass off, throws it short, and complete. 17 seconds to play first half. Jesse Clark, the fullback, the intended receiver. Didn't have anybody deep because Texas was playing center field. I'll tell you, the Horns have really been putting good pressure on the quarterback all day today. This is, as we said at the top of the show, a young defensive unit. About the only guy they really lose of any significance is Kiki. Yeah. yeah. Eric Holly, uh, he's going to leave him too. But Ed Williams has won that job over on that side anyway when Eric got hurt. Taylor back on second down and ten. Has some time now, but he can't find anybody downfield. And he throws the ball short. And Carl Miller, a freshman from Pine Bluff, has it bounce off his hands incomplete. And you've got 11 seconds to play. I think that's kind of a give up play right there. Either you're going to run out the clock, uh, just go down on one knee, or with an arm like Brad Taylor, you might as well put a few Hail Marys up there. Well, he's got know? the wind at his back. We know he can throw the thing 70 yards. I'd run two or three guys down there and just throw it up. Quarterback draw. Don't like that call either. And that'll run out the clock, probably. Yeah, but if you're going to run out the clock, why waste your quarterback doing it? First half is over. And Texas leads by 14, 21 to 7, as Arkansas has turned it over four times. Dan Simon now with Coach Fred Akers. Not only has Texas put incredible pressure on Arkansas quarterbacks, Coach, you have managed to cash in on many of their mistakes. Yes, and they've made several. And I don't think they're going to continue to be that generous. Uh, we've been able to get that big one on the punt return, a big fumble, and uh, but we're not going to turn it down. We are going to have to, however, get a little closer to some of those receivers. They've got too many uh, receivers open. Tell me, how much will that injury to your defensive tackle, Ralph Darnell, hurt you? Well, we don't like to ever be without our starters, but we played four tackles all year long, and if we don't get anyone else hurt, I think we can be, we'll be able to go through it because we've got one of the our defensive tackles uh, that was in there last time. That's a backup offensive tackle. But he, he can play, but if we don't get another one hurt, we'll be all right. I'm sure you heard that Coach Lou Holtz has been quoted as saying that Texas is on a, is on a roll so much so that, in fact, that you really ought to go to Las Vegas. Do you believe that? Well, Lou says lots of things. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Back to the locker room and back upstairs to keep track. All right, we'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC. And a word from our local station. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. I'm Jim Lampley, and along with Jack Whitaker and Bino Cook, I'll be bringing you a look back at today's Army-Navy game and also a look back at the 1982 college football season in total in review. Earlier today in Philadelphia, Navy under first-year coach Gary Tranquil beat Army 24-7. A look now at some of the things that happened in that ball game as part of our Fireman's Fund Flashback. The Fireman's Fund Flashback is brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance, and Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent or broker near you. 67,307 spectators for the game in Philadelphia today, and of course preceded by the traditional parade of the cadets and the midshipmen. It was a slow offensive game in the first half, Navy scoring first on this two-yard touchdown run by Napoleon McCallum, set up by a fumbled punt that made it 7-0. Then in the first quarter, Army came back after a Navy field goal. Quarterback Rich Laughlin with the three-yard touchdown run that narrowed the halftime margin in the ballgame to 10 to 7. After a scoreless second quarter, Navy cranked it up in the third quarter. Sophomore third string quarterback Rick Williams, 17-yard touchdown pass to Bill Seaback, and it was 17-7. A later touchdown, a one-yard touchdown run by Jim Scannell in the fourth quarter. Navy leads the series 40 wins to 38 for Army, seven ties. Next year's game will be in Philadelphia or perhaps in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Holtz, where his Razorbacks are trailing at the half 21 to 7. However, you do have some bad news about your quarterback, Tom Jones. Well, I'm going to go with what the trainer told me. He told me he thought that he had a broken arm. You know, I didn't check it or evaluate it, but you know, that's all part of the game. It's unfortunate because he's a great competitor. Those things happen. Can you explain what happened in that play? Well, I really didn't see it. You know, it, number one, where they're getting a tremendous rush on us, and we have four turnovers first half, don't give the quarterback time, they play hand-to-man -man coverage. Uh, I know that I wouldn't want to be a quarterback the first half. It's a big problem. 
problem for this team to have Tom Jones out, isn't it? Well, it's a big problem for any football team, but we came down here with another quarterback. We have confidence in him, and this game ended over by a long shot. Now, you'll come up with some big plays. I would assume at least that's what Frank Royal said. You'll go to the air with him? Well, we're just going to have player own football game, but we can't turn it over four times in our uh, twice on our end of the field, twice on their end. They have a fine football team, but we have to stand up and be accounted for. we got to fold up shop and go home. All right, Coach, thanks. Let's Thank get you. this game going again. Tom Jones, quarterback for Arkansas, has maybe a broken arm. Keith? Well, we were told on the sidelines he had a scratched eye. Maybe it's two separate injuries to Tom. That is bad news. High towering kickoff. Turkey Walls out of the end zone is coming. Two yards deep, and he's still coming. And he comes all the way out to the 27 before the Razorbacks can bring him down. Mike Harris in on the tackle. 21 to 7 ball game. Texas is leading. And here are the starters for the Horns. Clark Luck have been in the backfield most of the time. Davis has played in goal line circumstances for them. The big guys up front. Mitchell's had a big first half. Smith, McJunkin, Ruther, Dawson, and Millard. And an Arkansas man hurt on the play, and timeout being taken for him. It's been a neighborhood scuffle, and while the timeout, and those of you have not heard, one of my favorite people, and I, a man with millions of friends in college football, passed away yesterday at age 84. Dutch Meyer, who had a brilliant coaching career, and over at the Texas Christian University, winning the national championship in 38. He won three conference titles. He developed Davey O'Brien and Sammy Ball. He was quite a fellow. And we'll all miss him. But he gave us 84 great years of his life, and he was quite a leader of men. Dutch Meyer. First down for Texas from the 27 now, as Tatum goes off the field. They give the ball to Clark, the tailback, and Darrell Clark gets it up across the 30 to about the 31. Billy Ray Smith, the big defensive end, 6'3", 228. Earl Buckingham, defensive tackle for Arkansas, 6'2", 250. Ricky Richardson, 5'11", 260. And Ron Perot, 6'8", 253. Linebackers, Mark Lee, 6'1", 199. Burt Zinneman, 5'11", 220. And Milton Field, 6'2", 220. It is second down and about seven for Texas from the 31. Brewer gives the ball to Darrell Clark again, and Clark is hammered down. Right at the line of scrimmage, he is hit by the strong safety, Keith Burns. So let's meet Keith and his pals back in that secondary. Nathan Jones, six-footer, 190. Danny Walters, 6'2", 191. Keith Burns just made the tackle, 6'3", 201. And Greg Lasker, a freshman, at 6'1", 180. step and then stayed at home and sure enough found himself a quarterback. So Telchik will come in and the horns will kick and the statistics for the first half. One big number really stands out there. Number four. Four turnovers for Arkansas in the first half. Lou Holt said it. We gave away the football and we did not protect our quarterback. It will be the fifth kick of the ball game for Telchik and not a very good one across and calling a fair catch very quickly for the Razorbacks number 19 Kent Reaver a defensive back playing up in the short position only a 26 yarder as Celtic shanked it and so here's Arkansas getting their first possession of the second half good field position at their own 42. Brad Taylor the quarterback. Gary Anderson and Jesse Clark behind him. And outside it goes to Anderson. And the Texas defense brings it out pretty well. Fumble! Arkansas keeps it. Alfred Mohammed, I believe, is the big guy who covered it. Gary Gray, I believe, was the Texas man that came across and whacked him. Came up from his free safety position. Really got a lick. <laughs> sure pig. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Gary Anderson, Clark, Dameron and Holloway, the wide people behind Taylor. In case you missed it, they think Tom Jones might have a broken arm. 
Second down, about five. There goes the big fullback, Clark, and he almost broke a big one. Almost got out of there. Number two, Jerry Gray, the free safety, grabbed him by the feet and tripped him up. Ed Williams, the defensive end, junior, 238 for Texas. That's big Tony DeGrate, 6'4", 270. The other tackle, Ralph Darnell, is out with a vertebrae, I mean, a, a cartilage problem. Kika Diella, 238. Mark Lang, a linebacker, 225. Tony Edwards, only a sophomore, 240. And June James, another sophomore, 220. And Arkansas on the first down from the Texas 46. Take it inside with Brad Taylor. And not a whole lot there for him. Marcy Cade is a six foot 185. Craig Curry, I know, Fred Acorn, 5'10", 178. Craig Curry, six feet, 187. Jerry Gray, a sophomore, 6'1", 178. Just over the Texas 45. Second down and nine for the Hogs. And Taylor straight back. Better protection to start this second half. And the pass is incomplete. The ball was thrown just a little bit behind Derek Holloway, and Holloway couldn't get a hold of it. And to give you an idea of the strength in Taylor's arms, he just burned the bullet there. He really has a rifle for an arm. Now, Holloway is running about a 15-yard curl-in route, and that is a very catchable ball. In fact, he hit him right on the numbers. There's no doubt about the fact that he could catch that football. It was slightly behind him. If you're going to throw that curl in, it's better to throw it on the other side, but he should have had it. Third down and nine. Texas, now look at this. They've got six people, seven people up on the front, and the heat's on. And Taylor gets it away, and it is caught. It is caught by Luther Franklin. And Brad Taylor was literally running for his life. Well, look at all the orange shirts coming. This man is a great athlete right here. He's a basketball player. Lou Holtz has said he has the quickest release of any man he has ever coached. Newcomer of the year last year in the Southwest Conference. Threw for over 300 yards in last year's Gator Bowl. Luther Franklin, the tight end, coming on a crossing pattern, gets into the plane there and makes a good catch of a Brad Taylor throw. And first down at the Texas 27. Taylor hands it inside, Clark. And Big Jesse just keeps on turning and takes it down to the 24. Picked up three yards. This has been perhaps the best quarterback tandem they have had since the days of Montgomery and Ferguson when Frank Broyles was the coach. That goes back to 1970. But of course, now Tom Jones is out of there. 21-7 Texas lead. Razorbacks need a touchdown to get back into this ball game. They can get one here. Like Lou said, hanging over. Taylor on the option. And Darrell Bowles gets it to about the 23. Jerry Gray again in on the tackle. He's busy. That sophomore from Lubbock. Now let's get a report on Tom Jones from Anson. We did report to you earlier that Arkansas quarterback Tom Jones may have a broken left arm. Right now, he's down in the locker room. They are putting a splint on it, and they won't have it x-rayed until after the game and won't know for sure until then. Back upstairs to keep. 9.50 to go in the third quarter. Ball just inside the Texas 23. It's third down and six. Taylor, back he goes. Pressure. Always pressure. Gets it away into, oh, it's there, not intercepted. No, no, trapped it. Trapped it. Oh, he came close to picking it off, though. That's Craig Curry, number five. But look at that. There were four big dudes chasing Brad Taylor. <laughs> Those are nice, not nice dudes, either. <laughs> Williams, Diella, and DeGrate. The whole front four. And uh, Tilton. So in comes a field goal try. It'll be Martin Smith. Young man from Manchester, England. We indicated they have not had a whole lot of luck with their kicking game. His longest kick, 33 yards this year. Barefooted, he has attacked this one from 39 yards. Popped it up. No good. Razorbacks just don't really have a place kicker. This fellow's a swimmer. So at 9.29 to go, Arkansas has turned away. Texas will take over the ball, first down at their own 23. Downtown Austin, Texas, where the university is located. It's a big university. 
A little over 67,000 people watching today. Cool, gray day. Texas on the first snap. Go back to the ground game. Darrell Clark carrying it. And he gets it out to the 26 where Milton Fields makes the hit on him. That is perhaps the definitive eye formation play. The tailback blast or isolation play. How many times have you seen USC run that in the last 15 years? And how many great tailbacks? Yeah, that's different. Texas without great speed coming out of the backfield. Adequate speed, but not great speed. Second down and seven. Mark's got the ball on a sweep. He's up just short of the 30. We're going to need about three and a half yards for the first down. Coming up on ABC's presentation of NFL Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern Time next Monday, the New York Jets and the Detroit Lions. The Jets rolling along at 3-1, and Detroit trying to get things together and make a run toward the playoffs at 2-2. Sims McNeil, what a matchup of running backs. Maybe yes, the sir. best around right now. Third down three. Got it. Walls. Erky Walls up on the 44. The reason that Perky Walls is so intimidating is his speed, and because of that, they're laying off him. Looks like he's going to run a fly pattern, and now he runs a deep comeback to the inside. Ball's right on the money, and Greg Lasky, number three, the free safety, comes up to make the tackle. And first down Longhorns, their own 44. 7.50 to go, third quarter, 21-7, Texas leading. Robert Brewer goes deep with it, could be picked off. Greg Lasker got turned around on it. Erky Walls downfield was the intended receiver. He was running down the sidelines and had come back to the ball. And uh, the ball wasn't anywhere near it. It was near Lasker, though. He should have caught that for an interception. That would have been a big play for the Hawks. You see that Arkansas was plagued by mistakes. Opportunistic. Texas are the Hawks. Cash stole them in. Well, that's the mark of a good football team. You get an opportunity, run with it. Do something with it. Mark the tailback up to the 46. Billy Ray Smith once again so active, so intimidating. Look at this. Reaches in there and grabs Clark's foot just as he's starting to go into the hole. Give you an idea that Arkansas has made some obvious changes defensively up front. They're slanting a little differently and sometimes stunning some. As Brewer goes back to throw. Throw that time, Billy Ray Smith looping outside and got him. We are seeing some great defensive play today from both Diala and Smith. Now, watch Billy Ray again, who, as you see his numbers there on quarterback sacks, has simply been awesome and intimidating. Beats two blockers, comes around the backside of Brewer. In the life of every quarterback, there is always a blind side. How well I remember. Billy Ray is big, though, he hurts, too. Gets heavier and heavier. <laughs> yeah. 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 finally nails one. His last two kicks have been 28 and 26, and this one runs Gary Anderson all the way back to his 13. But look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness! If he'd have cut that thing to the sidelines, he might have scored. But Rob Morshell, the reserve quarterback, brought him down. Arkansas again with good field position. The ball's out on the 42. Well, that's kind of pretty. If you're sitting in Los Angeles or someplace looking at it, <laughs> it carries the, the promise of rain, looks to me like. They had some rain earlier this week, heavy rain. First down from the 42, Taylor. Goes deep over the middle, and it is incomplete. And it was the pass intended for Holloway, but he hit Mark Ling, the Texas linebacker, right on the number. One of the things this young sophomore is going to have to learn is that you don't force the ball. 
Derek Holloway, number 29, at the X or wide receiver position on the left, goes down and in. He's cutting across the middle. Now, when the linebacker, Lang, is there, you don't force the football. Mark Lang, number 53, has been the leading tackler on the team, and right there makes a good defensive play. Trying to set a screen, Gary Anderson. to about the 46. It'll be third down and seven, and again, it's Kiki Diala and on the play for Texas. Kiki Diala was actually knocked off his feet here and then recovered. Watch it. Number 31. Now right here is where he is knocked down. Now, we have a slow developing screen out here to the left. Watch. He gets up very quickly. All right, here we go. Comes back out. Up there. And up there. We got to have a third down. Let's go. Ultimately makes the tackle on Gary Anderson. That's not only agility, it's determination. He's after Taylor, and he's got him. Diala again. What a day for Kiki. They're going to miss that guy. Oh, boy. Well, Billy Ray on the Arkansas side is having the same kind of a day, so two defensive ends are in the running for the MVP. The teams are going to miss them, but the NFL is going to welcome them. 21st sack of the year by Diella and the 48th of the season by Texas. Now Brad Taylor is on a punt. You know, it looks to me like Taylor might be a little lame, too. Cover. He doesn't look as mobile as he did a few, uh, well, actually, last quarter he looked better. He looked more agile at the end of the second quarter. Kicks out of there for Goodwin. Morshell comes over and waves fair catch. And he's put down to Texas 31. Play in the third quarter. We've got a timeout. Texas leading by 14. Point I started to make a while ago as Texas comes up first down on the 31. His first nine carries, Darrell Clark, the tailback, gained 63 yards. His last 10 carries, Arkansas shut him down. He's only gained nine yards. And he's going to pick up a couple there. So the Razorbacks are pretty well shut down the Texas running game. That was really the key to Texas' uh, attack in the second quarter. They were yep. dominating with their running game at that time. Second down and seven from the 34. Four horns. Gentlemen, Lee. They feel that they have the best linebackers at Arkansas since 1968, and those guys are the reason. Uh-oh. Gentlemen hurt. That could be costly. Bert Zinneman, number 48, at his front linebacker go, position. Go, He's been the go, leading tackler on the team. Go, He's pursuing go, here. Now he closes in. Makes the contact on the ball carrier Clark right there. Flies through the air. And I don't see exactly, frankly, where he gets hurt, Keith. Calvin Shaw comes in to replace him, a junior out of Pine Bluff. Irvin Davis is in there with Mike Luck now at the running back position for Texas. The ball is just short of the 40. Where it's third down and about two. Carrying is Irvin Davis. Again, he's a big back, 5'11", 225. Good job of mixing up the tailback plays on this series. Looky here. Boy, what a matchup this has been. I think maybe two of the premier defensive players I have seen in the country this year, Keith. Six tackles for Billy Ray Smith, eight for Kiki Diala. And look at the sacks. As usual, they have been busy in a lot of different ways. Contact, pursuit, sacks. Everything. Here comes Herky Walls on that reverse. He's going to throw it. Gets it up. He's got a man wide open. Duhon. Duhon steps out of bounds at the 18, 19. It was touchdown if he'd have had a little more real estate. Don't you love it? Herky Walls, remember, was a high school quarterback. He is a superlative athlete. Pitch out to the tailback. Here's the reverse. Herky Walls comes around, throws on the run. Duhon down here on a crossing route. 
And if he can keep the feet in bounds and turn up field, he's got a touchdown. Anyway, it's a good gainer. That it is. First down at the Arkansas 19. Back to the ground game. Luck. And Luck bangs it. And that's the proper work to about the 16, the three. Fred Aker says that this team has been more fun coaching than any team he's ever had. Pleasant surprises starting in the springtime. That uh, piece of information right there is about to be tested. Right back. Second down and seven on the 16. There goes Clark. Darrell Clark up the middle. Tumbles down at the 11. A couple of yards short of his first down. Earl Buckingham is the man that took the legs from under him. After sputtering for a while, Darrell Clark is on the move again. Credit that offensive line, particularly the right side. Well, they beat on you. Will. Ruther, Dawson, Millard, some oxen. Closer to the 17. Third down and about two and a half. Post Clark. Just depends on the mark. Looks like they're going to mark it at the nine. If it is at the nine, it will be a first down and goal. Calvin Shaw made the tackle for Arkansas. The man who replaced Burt Zinneman, who limped off a few moments ago. First and goal, Texas at the Arkansas nine. They got Duhon to the right, Walls to the left. Luck! Touchdown! They blow right over the left side on the classic fullback play off of the I formation. Smith and McJunction get big blocks. They take out Billy Ray Smith and Mark Lee, and here comes Luck, bulldozing his way into the end zone. He's a tough runner. Allegra for the extra point is good. One minute and 50 seconds to play, and it's 28 to seven. One of the men taken out on that play, number 51, they just knocked him right out of there. The man who stepped in for uh, Zinneman a moment ago, Calvin Shaw, number 51, gets a, a really tough welcome. It's the left tackle for Texas, and that would be Casey Smith, number 50. And so the Longhorns build the lead to 21 in the closing minutes of the third quarter. Upside down rule. Whose camera is that? Whose cameraman on that? Sal Felino? Didn't know Sal could uh, stand on his head. <laughs> I knew he was talented. 28 to 7. Texas leads. Derek Holloway is the deep man for Arkansas. Minute 50 to go. Third quarter. Allegra hits it. The high hanger. Goes up into the wind and stays up there a while. Holloway coming. Three man wedge in front. And the Longhorns get him up around the 23 24. Well, it's put up time for the Razorbacks now, isn't it? They are now in the posture of playing catch-up football, which means that you got to go to some of the different pages of your playbook. As in Holloway and Dameron Wide. Taylor. Tom Jones out with a possible broken arm. Long count. Taylor gives inside to Jesse Clark. And Jesse up to about the 25-26. Give him three. Second down, seven. Tony Edwards, middle linebacker, brought him down. Haven't seen Gary Anderson in a pass route for a while. No, haven't. will do right about now. Second down and seven. There he goes. Outside, they're going to sweep him. Well, he can burn it. He's got a first down. 
He gets out there and sees a crack. He's got that marvelous change of pace that he can really turn it on. Frank Broyles was telling me yesterday that uh, he can't really think of anyone who has had more athletic ability at the University of Arkansas unless it was possibly Lance Allward. I'd agree with that. Arkansas averaging 229 yards on the ground per game during the season. Today they've only gained 69. As Taylor fires a sharp one to Dameron and Kim makes the catch. He was moved to that flanker position from the defensive secondary this year. He's a senior from Rogers, which is just up the road from Fayetteville. Taylor really rifled that ball. You see the, the strength and the quickness of his release on that play. Second down and about two. Let Clark have it. Big Jesse gets the first down as he bangs his way up to the 47. Ed Williams, a junior from Odessa, brought him down, defensive end. Sugar Bowl, New Year's night, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central here on ABC, 5 o'clock Pacific. We never talk about the mountains. That's 6 o'clock in the mountain time zone, folks. <laughs> Georgia and Penn State, the All battle right. for the national championship. Taylor stands up, whips it, almost intercepted, almost by Richard Peavy, who has one already. Instinctive football player, this young Peavy. One of the things young Brad Taylor is going to have to learn is that on situations like this, there are going to be times when he's going to have to pump the ball and throw the ball with more of a looping trajectory because there again, we saw the example of forcing the football. He did that a few moments ago into a linebacker. Luther Franklin was the intended receiver. Second down, 10. Get a little pressure on him and get him. So Texas sacks the Arkansas quarterback one more time as Tony DeGreat and John Haynes come in to get him. They weigh 550 pounds. Quarter is over. Now, on their own 42, and they need 16 yards. Tony DeGreat hobbled off the field, was helped off the field. First leg, Bill Heathcock in to replace him. He's on. Taylor's pass. It's a wounded duck. And it's caught by Holloway. Derek Holloway coming back to the ball. Flags it down right in front of Mossy Cade. Kiki Diala hits Taylor just as he threw it. This is a lucky play because Brad Taylor really just threw this ball up for grabs because he was under a lot of pressure from Diala. Holloway, who we saw make a similar catch to this two weeks ago in the ball game against SMU, just kind of claws his way back in there and takes the ball away from Bossy Cade, number three. And first down inside the Texas 24. Boy, good play by Holloway. Brad Taylor looking for some help. Somebody went the wrong way. Let's go back to that last play and you'll see why that was a wounded duck that Taylor this, put up. This has been the key to defense today for Texas. Kiki Diala blowing around the tackle. Fights his way off, uses his hands, good footwork, determination, quickness, strength, and look at this shot into the quarterback. And that is the aforementioned wounded duck that Keith Jackson talked about. However, Holloway came down with a circus test. From the 25, Brad Taylor gets it off, going deep to the corner. Oh, my goodness. There was a collision there. Mark Messler and Fred Acorn banging around, but no flag. Two officials were right there. Fred Acorn should have had an interception there. Messler number 88 down to the end zone. Acorn, who got the starting assignment today, turns around late. And here, look, the ball is going to virtually, well, that would have been a heck of a catch if he had made it. My first thought was that he should have caught the ball, but it would have been a terrific interception had he made the catch. Ball is outside the 25, where it is third down, and about 12. Taylor. I tell you, that side of the line has been like a patch of thorns all day. Heathcock, 68, and uh, Ty Allert, 48, and Diella, 31. I have seen some of the worst calls today from Arkansas on third and long yardage. I do not understand that at all. 
13 minutes and 30 seconds to play in a ball game, and Texas leading it 28 to 7. Another look at Austin from the Goodyear Blimp America with Captain John Moran and our cameraman Charlie Mitchell. And down in Memorial Stadium. Arkansas on fourth down and 12 from the Texas 26 and Brad Taylor rolls it out. He throws to the sidelines and it is incomplete intended for Kim Dameron. What I don't understand is why they waited till fourth and 12 to do that. And answer your question. <laughs> Cameron number 44 out, up, and back on a comeback route. And the ball is late. thrown wide. And late. And late. High and outside. Texas takes it. First down, 25. Just going to run it as much as Arkansas will allow him. Clark wiggling around, gets a couple of yards. Time is the obvious ally of Texas now. The number that still stands out, Keith, is that four turnovers. Just like Lou Holtz told us at halftime, they've coughed up the football and they have not protected their quarterback. We do see the dominance once again. Texas beginning to really show some strength again with their running attack. That's what they will have to do here in the fourth quarter. They've got to shut down the Texas ground game and get a touchdown pretty quick. There goes Clark over the top. That's yardage the hard way, but they'll take it. Calvin Shaw makes the tackle for the Razorbacks. They continue to run right at Burt Zinneman's replacement, Calvin Shaw. There goes Luck now and Davis into the backfield with Orr and Clark coming out. So uh, Mike Luck, 200 pounds, and Irvin Davis, 225 for the running back. On third and two. Give it to Davis. He'd make it. He did not make it. It'll be fourth down and a better yard. It'll be a short yard, but it's fourth down. And I, you know Texas is going to punch that thing out of there. Paul Korn, big shootout. This was the original. Been a lot of copycat shootouts since 1969, but this was the big one. That looks fun of the day by Telchik. He's had some good ones and he's had some bad ones. Retreats to the 13. Looking for something. And there just isn't much there. He gets it back to the 25. That was a 52-yard punt. 11-21 to play in the game. Well, Arkansas is up against the rock and hard place now. If they don't get something on the board pretty quick, they can kiss this one goodbye. And Lou Holtz will still be winless in Austin. First down for the Hogs from the 25. Ball goes to Darrell Bowles, number 21, in the backfield with Mark Douglas, number 20, and Gene Chilton makes the tackle after a short game. Texas breaking on top. Arkansas tied them. And then Texas pounded in for 14 in the second quarter using uh, the Arkansas mistakes. And they had an impressive drive, the big play being the Herky Walls pass to Brent Duhon to get that touchdown in the third quarter. And that's the most points scored against the Razorbacks this entire season. And Taylor on second down and eight. John Haynes almost tripped him. Taylor now trying to get loose for the first down. And he's close to it. That's a good, tough run by Brad Taylor. And the man who almost had him for a loss, John Haynes, is rolling around on the ground. Hurt back up field. Taylor's scrambling for his life. You know, they told us they were going to open up the attack today, but I would say basically Arkansas's offense has been rather unimaginative. They have not mixed in a lot of screens or draws. They've thrown a couple of slow developing screens, but I think the attack basically has been unimaginative. John Haynes almost had Taylor, <clears throat> but in uh, trying to twist back to get him, looked to me like he twisted his knee. 
Yeah, or his ankle, and that's what's causing his discomfort. Ten and a half minutes to play in the football game. Navy beat Army today, 24 to 7. Coach Quantrell getting his uh, first win as the head man of the middies. And West Georgia. West Georgia won the Division Three championship in the second year of its football program, beating Augustana today, 14 to nothing. And Bobby Pate and the West Georgia Braves, congratulations to them. You know, I used to plow as a boy. Probably right about where that old football stadium sits down there. I don't know. I grew up right in, in the general area. Well, I'm glad you shared that with us. <laughs> but they've done a fine job. As Arkansas goes ahead and gets the first down on the running play to the right side with Darrell Bowles carrying. Delaware, the Blue Hens, tough every year, aren't they? Beat Colgate today, 20 to 13, and Louisiana Tech wins their way out of the quarterfinals in one double-A, beating South Carolina State decisively. It's another school that's always tough, it seems. Back goes Brad Taylor to throw on first down. Got some time, he's got a man. Derek Holloway, first down, and the ball is at the Texas 36. At Mark Lang, a six foot three inch, 225 pound junior from Ira Ann is gonna make the stop. Now he plays about as deep as any linebacker I think I've seen all year. Derek Holloway, down, curl in, and that ball is right on the money. That's what Brad Taylor does best. From the 36, an option right. There's Anderson. And he gets it maybe to the 35. Nine and a half minutes to play in the ball game. 28 to 7, Longhorns. That's what they've got to do. They've got to go with their strength right now. Brad Taylor throwing sharp intermediate passes and getting the ball to their most consistent threat, Jerry Anderson. I guess you have to go back to Jerry Levias to find maybe as good an all-purpose player in the Southwest Conference as Jerry Anderson. Jesse Clark is back in the Arkansas backfield now with Anderson. It's second down, nine. Near the 35. Taylor stands up, goes over the middle with it. Intercepted! Uh, go for a quick pop over the middle and looked to me like the ball was tipped a little bit went right into Jerry Gray's waiting arm. Jerry Gray, the free safety, is really having an outstanding afternoon today for the horn. Play action pass. Look, pump fake. Aiming for the wide receiver. The ball is tipped by number 67 for Texas. That's Ford. And there's the interception. It was tipped by number 63 for Tony Texas. Tony Edwards, that's the middle Edwards, linebacker. The linebacker. Yeah. So that's the fifth turnover tied by Arkansas. That's the key to the football game. Hard to win when you lose it that many minutes. First down, Texas at the 40. Brewer, look at this. He's going big early. Duhon slides out of bounds with a completed pass at the 32. Shows a lot of imagination and courage. Texas is not going to sit on their lead. After a, a turnover, they come right with a big play. It's a post corner route. Duhan, the wide receiver, is going to come back and catch the ball right along the sideline. That is a safe place to throw the corner route. Robert Brewer, another one of those quarterbacks, all he can do is win. 14 and 2 since he took over. Back Clark. And Darrell jumps over the right side for a couple of yards to get it inside the 30 where Bobby Sean, the big senior from Buffalo, Missouri, brings him down. Final game of our regular season here on ABC. And Texas thrashing the Razorbacks 28 to 7. Second down, eight. Brewer still got it. Wants to go deep with it and does. And it is Mitchell. What a fine defensive play by Kevin Wyatt, the freshman out of Kansas City. He saved the touchdown. Mitchell was there on a corner route. Play action pass. He fakes the sprint draw to the tailback Clark. Sets up. Looking back now to the corner. Mitchell right now has a step. He should keep running. He actually slowed up. 
But there is a great effort by Kevin Wyatt, the cornerback, number seven, as he tips the ball away. Looked like that ball kind of fluttered. Didn't have a whole lot of zip on it. Go back to Clark, the tailback. And on third down and eight, he's well short of the first down. And Clark now has 100 yards on 27 carries in the ball game. And here comes the Texas kicking team. Raul Allegra, Rob Morshell. Snapper is David Jones. They'll put it down just inside the 35. So it's fair to call it a 45-yard field goal. From that distance, he's four out of seven on the year. It is up. So with 7.08 to play in the football game, Texas now dominating 31 to 7. Lights are on. An hour of dust here in Austin, Texas. Things are not too bright for the Arkansas Razorbacks either. Only 7.08 to play in the ball game. Derek Holloway, the deep man. And Allegra will kick it off. Bangs it. All the way. Yard deep in the end zone. It's coming out. Three man wedge. Trying to get to the sideline. Now he has to go back inside as the Orange Church pin him over there, and they've got him about the 17. Allegra, after his field <laughs> goal, he reacts, doesn't he? He's kicking the ball right now about as well as he's ever kicked in his life. They say that with that big win they had earlier in the week, he kicked one 72 yards that right? in practice. That's, uh, earlier in the year, he was feeling real terrible about his kicking, and uh, things have turned around for him the last part of the season. Right now, he's doing it very well. Arkansas from the 17. First down. Brad Taylor. Under pressure. Bounces the ball in front of the intended receiver. Eric Holloway. Boy, he has been under pressure all afternoon. You just don't throw the ball well when you have that much pressure. Well, Lou Holt's gut feeling is right. He just, Lou said they were down. They had their best practice since the tie with SMU on Wednesday, and he thought maybe things were coming back. But not the case, apparently. Texas, on the meantime, lost two in the middle to Oklahoma and SMU, and they've won five in a row, trying to make it six in a row. Brad Taylor, the quarterback, electing to keep. No time to be running option plays. Uh -oh. They have just not been able to give the quarterback much time. Well, I think, Keith, that they should have been mixing in some screens and draws to go along with their their drop back pass series. And uh, to me, their, their passing offense has been really unimaginative all afternoon. Third and about seven. Again, Taylor's under pressure. He's got a screen set up over there for Anderson, but Anderson's blocking doesn't form for him, and Texas just buries it. Richard Peavy was the first man to get there. He was a freshman out of Houston playing a free safety position. He ate him up. Well, that's just like I was saying. They should call more screen passes. <laughs> <laughs> well, not much, much has worked. Texas defense has just been uh, overpowering. Brad Taylor in the punt, 51, 54, and 38. On his three, it's over his head and out of the end zone. 33 to seven, a safety. Well, it's going to rain for real probably before the night is out. But I would imagine right now the Razorbacks feel like they have been caught in the middle of a flood. Greg Garrison, the snapper for Arkansas, and he snaps it right over Taylor's head and out of the end zone for a safety. Look at Brad Taylor back here in frustrated frustration. He leaps high, tries to grab the ball with his left hand. It's about two feet over his head. And there it is, out of the end zone. Two more points for the horn. There it is. See the left hand go up? He's trying to block the ball right there. Comes down, and he sees that he's, it's pretty much over. And on top of that, 
Arkansas has got to get up, give up the ball now with 540 to play in the game. Now Brad Taylor has to punt the ball. Brad's on the way to start looking for the bus. <laughs> Texas keeps beating on him, but he may be wanting to join Tom Jones in the ambulance. Texas defense really does something. Coming up next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship fight. Live from Sacramento, California, matching the champion Bazooka Limon against Bobby Chacon. That's a rivalry that will be taking place for the fourth time. ABC's Wide World of Sports next Saturday. There's the punt by Taylor. He didn't really hit it. And it is Monty Daly who tries to get a hold of it. Pretty worked out pretty well, though. Once it got on the ground, it uh, wobbled down around 62 yards. Good roll. <laughs> Got to catch that thing at this artificial surface. You just <laughs> that's right. You can't stop it. I know uh, Frank just foams at the mouth when he talks about it. You know he's he would well his, historically he always had two people sometimes three back there because uh, but nowadays in order to get some pressure on the kicking game and it oftentimes works they will send one man back. Todd Dodge, a sophomore from Port Arthur, who figures to be the Texas quarterback next year, is now in the ball game for the Longhorns as they go to work. First down from their own 19. John Walker is in the ball game, the junior out of Killeen for the first time today. Johnny is the seven foot high jumper. Now playing tailback. 7 1, and he will leap over that line for you. Well, I think most people thought when the year started that John Walker would be the tailback for Texas, but Darrell Clark just closed with a big effort in his senior year and, and took the job. Second down, about seven. The ball is sitting out around the 22. And Terry Orr, a junior from Abilene. He didn't, I don't think, get back to the line of scrimmage. Clock running, 455 to play in the game, and been a long day for Lou Holt and company. We make for the Student Endowed Centennial Fellowship Fund. All of the that uh, cruncher that Texas stuck in the end zone of the third quarter was really the backbreaker. Plus the fact that Arkansas still has made some mistakes. They've also been flagged in penalty seven times. So that tends to disrupt any momentum as well. Dodge running around back there. Gets his pass away. And the pass is caught up at the 37 by Russell Hayes, a sophomore from San Antonio. So Dodge shows good mobility. Todd Dodge, 5'11", 170. This is what the pro scouts refer to as escape dimension. Watch Todd Dodge, number 13, who had a great high school career. Uh, his favorite receiver in high school was Duhan, as a matter of fact. They were a high school battery. Rolls out to his right, and here comes Hayes, crossing right into the pattern. And he threaded the needle there. That was a perfect pass. But lurking back downfield was a penalty flag against Texas. Holding on the offense. Repeat third down. That's the first penalty of the second half against either team. Holding backs them up 10. 422 to play in the game. Ball is sitting at the 11. Third down, about 19. Uh oh, Todd Dodge trying to drop straight back. Lost his footing and fell down. And so the young sophomore gets a little dose of humility. Right there, you see that he peeled out with the wrong foot, it looked like, Keith. Stepped on it. Oh, it's all right. There it is. Yes, right there. Center the center stepped on it. The center steps on his foot. And down he goes. And David Jones, 6'3, 250, and probably. A 41 6 average today for John Keltrick, despite the fact that he's had a 32 yarder, a 28 yarder, and a 26 yarder. He has hit some big ones. Here he is. He's 
going to run the ball up the sidelines, and now he kicks it. And gets it upfield and hits the chalk at the Arkansas 36. He didn't cross the line of scrimmage. Oh, against, I like this. Against SMU, remember. This now is he, really they, a heads-up play. Yeah. Watch this. He makes a little move to the outside. Now he analyzes what's going on, and he sees that the line of scrimmage right there, and he kicks it on the run. Great move. He was across the line of scrimmage. He was across the line of scrimmage. My goodness. He was. Hey, everybody. You all here up there? We're going to try something. Remember? We're still look, we're scuffling through the rule book here as to see whether or not you're entitled to kick the ball after you've crossed the line of scrimmage on fourth down. In the meantime, Arkansas has got the ball. And Brad Taylor desperately trying to find somebody to throw it to and throws it into the crowd on the Texas sideline. I would like to have an interpretation of that rule because I was a punter myself and I remember a few occasions when I had to punt the ball on the run and I don't know if I was over the line of scrimmage or not. Coming up, the Prudential College School Board. There are our troops getting warmed up and ready for their chore. It's Beano on the left, Jack in the middle, and Jim on the right. Second down, 10 for Arkansas. Texas leading 33-7. And Arkansas just hasn't had anything go right for them today as Carl Miller, a freshman from Pine Bluff. This is Run. no time to be establishing the running game. Miller, number 31, on that last carry. <laughs> We've polled four different people up here, and we have a difference of opinion. <laughs> so you have to assume, I guess, that you can, if you choose, once you cross the line of scrimmage, go ahead and punt it. I frankly don't, cannot say absolutely what is the correct call on it. Might start a new trend. Well, you're entitled to free kicks. I know that. Yes, I know that too. But ninth penalty against Texas now. They've been nailed with 62 yards in penalties. It's second down and five for Arkansas. Now Taylor has some time and he throws it hard and he gets Bobby Joe Edmonds. So I guess uh, we, are, we have now confirmed and consulted with the liaison man on the sidelines and he says you can kick the football anywhere you want. I'll remember that one. I remember also in the Clemson uh, not Clemson, but South Carolina Georgia game a couple of years ago that uh, a bouncing ball was kicked by Jim Broadway. I know you can't do that, but he got away with it. <laughs> he slipped out to the white man, Carl Miller. And Miller on the first down from the 41 gets it up to the Texas 48. Only 220 left to play in the game. Triple option isn't going to do you a whole lot of good right nope, now. Not a bit. Bobby Joe Edwards coming wide. Along with Mark Missler. Brad Taylor gets it off. And it is caught by Luther Franklin, the tight end, for the first down at the Texas 36. And a minute and 56 seconds to play. The lights are on at Austin. Brad City has got its Christmas decorations out already. Brad Taylor is a well-disciplined athlete, and he is the quarterback of the future. He could rewrite the press guide before he's through. He has two more full seasons, and he really throws that football with a lot of authority. Taylor back. And it is incomplete, intended for Miller. Now a minute and 37 to play in the ball game, and second down 10 from the Texas 36. One of the things he will have to learn, however, is he's going to have to stop forcing the football, and he's going to have to learn to take a little something off it. I've seen it goes a little hard sometimes when he doesn't need to. Well, I, uh, that seems to be a common uh, trait amongst young quarterbacks. I remember John Elway's freshman year. Johnny threw that thing like a boy. Yeah. So did Lee Groskopf. Over the middle, incomplete. He had two people out there, Carl Miller and Bobby Joe uh, Edmonds, both. And penalty flag thrown across the way. Could be a holding call here. <laughs> ben playing Rock of Ages. <laughs> they trying to tell him something? Holding. 
on the offense, holding on the defense. The penalty is canceled. Replay the down. <laughs> is that is that tantamount to Dandy Don singing "Turn Out the Lights"? Is, I reckon. <laughs> Minute and 32. Second down, 10. Got away from Down the sideline goes Taylor and sticks his head down at the marker and goes out of bounds. T.J. Dilworth made the tackle from Dell Valley, Texas. The most valuable players today for Arkansas, Derek Holloway, who had a big day. Four receptions, 112 yards. And for Texas, who else but Kiki Diala, the defensive end. And the two universities will receive from Chevrolet $1,000 each for their general scholarship funds in the names of those players. Clear choices. Another first down. As Taylor on a deep drop. Gets it off deep. And it is incomplete. Carl Miller was down there, two Texas defenders, and it was a case of where the receiver became a defender to keep it from being intercepted. PB and Gray, both free safeties, were there. Well, it's been a good day for Fred and a bad day for Lou. Arkansas. Five turnovers, only 103 yards rushing. And a penalty flag against Texas, and they're marching it off down the field. That is the eighth flag against the Longhorns today. Well, it's a tenth flag, ten. Roughing the passer, defense, first down. I would imagine the Arkansas quarterbacks feel they could have had that early. Because it has been a rough day on the quarterbacks on the Arkansas side. It's first Very down. Rough. They're down on the 12. And Taylor back. Pressure on again. And down he goes again. The sixth sack of an Arkansas quarterback today. This time it was John Herrera. And you know where he plays? Defensive end. Diala getting a rest. He deserves it. All right, boys. Fred Akers played for Arkansas, of course, back in the late 50s, all-purpose player himself. He credits Frank Royals with the, as the man who really shaped his coaching philosophy. Taylor's pass is away from Missler. Intercepted. The sixth turnover by Arkansas today. Mossy Cade comes down with it. Mossy Cade, part of a young secondary that has been a very pleasant surprise. Missler, whose brother John caught a lot of passes for Arizona State, running an out pattern. Mossy Cade, the cornerback, comes up, steps inside. If you're going to throw a sideline cut, you throw it low and outside, not high and inside. Texas with the ball, first down at their own four, and all they have to do is run off 31 seconds. They'll just grind it along, just like that. Now all they have to do, they may have to take one more snap. Arkansas is not going to mess around and call a bunch of timeouts. They're just going to let the clock go on and run off. It's 33-7, Texas. And Texas huddling in the end zone. They do not have to snap the ball. The Texas Longhorns finish the season 9-2, and two, head for the Sun Bowl to play North Carolina. The University of Arkansas finished the season 8-2-1, and one, and they will go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl to play Florida. Final score, Texas 33 and Arkansas 7 as Fred Aiken gets a ride into the center of the field. Thank <laughs> you.